Levesque. I'm an applications engineer and part of the marketing team at Modelithics. Modelithics provides the most comprehensive model library of simulation models for all kinds of active and passive electrical components. Um, and they're all measurement validated. Um, we do the measurements in-house and we also provide measurement services. The unique thing about the models are that they're scalable and they offer many benefits, the extra parameters that help you get to an accurate design quickly and easily. So in this demo, I'm going to use NIAWR de design environment to show you some uh, specific parameters that are related to the advanced pad models in the simulation models. Um, so with that, I will head into the demo. Um, as you can see, this is a standard, um, just um, basic capacitor model. And basically, you can just enter in the, per the um, component value. Uh, this is Modelithics capacitor model. And you can see there are a lot of extra parameters here. Um, and even when you click into the model, there's a bunch of additional parameters that are available. So in this schematic, I'm um, just showing you the first parameter. It's the simulation mode parameter. And this gives you control of how the pads are handled in the simulation. Um, so s with a Monolithics global model, microwave global model, the pads are def by default included uh, in the simulation and in the layout. Uh, with, so that is sim mode 0. If you change it to sim mode 1, it changes the simulation to just act as an ideal model. It takes out all of the parasitics. Sim mode two just removes the pad stacks. An example of when you would want to use this is if, you're, if you've already simulated the layout in an EM simulation, you can um, remove the pad simulation from the model then so that it's not counted twice. And sim mode three is another fairly new parameter that, uh, option that we've added. And that is um, an even more simplified parasitic model, which gives a good approximation of removing the substrate parasitics as well, as well as the pad parasitics. But it keeps the internal parasitics of the component. And as you can see, this, in addition to affecting the electrical simulation, it also affects the layout. So in AWR, it's very easy just to quickly look at the layout. Um, this is sim mode one, so you, sim mode one, sim mode zero and sim mode one include the pads, um, and sim modes two and three do not include the pads. Um, another parameter that is related to sim mode is pad mode, and this does not affect the simulation, but it just affects the layout. So, um, as you can see, sim mode kind of has a default as to how the pads are handled, and if you use pad mode, it gives you an the op opportunity to override that default setting. So for example, if you don't want the pads in the layout, you can override that setting for sim mode zero, for example. Um, this option was added by customer request, and it just um, gives customers more control over how they set up their design, their schematic. Another pad parameter, this is um, part of dynamic pad model that's included in most of the CLR models. And recently in the new release for, for AWR, um, it's included with um, diode models. Um, some, not all of the parameters are available, but they're still dynamic pads, so they translate to the layout. This is the pad scaling. Um, parameter. As you can see, some of the parameters here are pad width, length, and gap, and they're, they're set to a default um, setting, but if you go into the model parameters, you'll see that they have a range of scalability, and you can change those values. And this lets you, again, have more flexibility over how that's handled. This does affect the electrical simulation, and in AWR, it translates to the layout. So you can see here, in the first example, it's um, minimum pads, and this is nominal, and these are um, maximum pads. Uh, and another parameter um, has to do with solder um, mask and solder paste lay layers in the layout. This does not affect the electrical simulation at all. Um, gives designers an opportunity to add a solder mask and solder paste layer um, in the layout. So if it's going to be used for fabrication, those layers will already be taken care of, at least for the model ethics models. 
And if you look at the layout here, you'll see what I mean. In this model, there's no solder mask or solder paste. In the second model, the solder mask is added. And in this one, solder mask and solder paste are both added. And then you can see that visually here. The solder mask has an aperture setting, so you can decide how far away from the pad it is configured. And then the solder, the solder paste uh, kind of gives you an inner aperture so that you can set the template for the solder paste layer. Another parameter in the model is pad angle. Um, you'll see that here. And this has to do with how the component is connected to the next adjacent element. So um, their options are zero degrees and plus and minus 90 degrees. And I have one of each set up here. And to show how that is handled in the layout, um, the default is zero. So it's you know basically just straight connections. And then there's plus or minus 90 degrees, which changes the connection point on the pad of the model. And this may be useful if you have space limitations or um, just uh, shape limitations of your design. And this does affect the electrical simulation as well, depending on the, how the pads are connected. And another um, unique feature is the pad and model parameter. And what this gives you is an option of how much of the pad is included in the model and in the simulation. So uh, the default is 100%. Um, and then there's also 50% where it shifts the reference plane and also removes 50% of the model in the simulation. There's 0% which takes out the pad. And this um, setting can be done individually for e either pad um, separately, depending on how you want the layout. The 0% takes out all of the pad simulation and moves the reference plane to the edge of the component. And the last option is the new feature that we've just added, and it just made available in the latest release of the Monolithics library for AWR. And it's called um, pad and model equals 3, and it's the shunt mode parameter. And this helps address and really simplify a Specific case, but it's a very common case. So this is, um, for example, when a part is placed in shunt on a microstrip line where one of the terminals is actually on the microstrip line. And this will shift the part so that it sits properly on the line, and it will also account for the pad um, and remove whatever's necessary to make sure that simulation is accurate. And to see these in a layout, for a visual representation. This is 100% where it's connected on the edge. You usually need a T line, um, a T connector to add these connections in any case. Um, this is the 50% case. This is 0%. And this is the new um, shunt um, connection feature. So you can see, the you actually do still see the pad, um, but the connection point was moved to the inner edge of the pad. and this was corrected for in the simulation. And this is what I'm going to show you an example of today. Um, so we had a, a power amplifier design that was featured in a article several years ago. And the designer um, kind of used some tricks to achieve. I'll show you the layout. And you can see this is kind of the final layout of the amplifier. And on the input matching network, there are two capacitors in shunt, and you can see that the one terminal on each one is on the microstrip line. And on the output matching network, there are three. These are not um, over the microstrip line because it will interfere with the transistor connection. So um, what the designer did in this case, since the shunt model was not available, was he added negative, a, a negative microstrip line to correct for it. And for each model, you have to do that individually, add a negative microstrip line, and um, you know, make sure that the dimensions are correct based on the pad dimensions. And also, um, sometimes a negative M line will affect some sim types of simulations. This is um, his design. And if you look at the results, you can see that there's decent agreement um, in the S parameters. If he hadn't made this c correction, um, there's an example of that in 
this example. And I'll show you the layout. So this is without the correction to shift the pads onto the microstrip line. And all of those capacitors are now outside on the, out, not on top of the microstrip line. And if he were to do this, you can see that the S parameters, that is this red line here, and it's quite a bit off from the measurement, which is the pink line. So then we went and added, took the same design, the same original design, and instead of the negative M line, um, we went into the input and out output matching network. And here's an example. We took out the negative M line component, and in the model, we set the port on that side to be in the shunt mode. Um, so we did that for all of the cases in the input and output matching network. In the results, it actually corrects um, almost exactly to the way that the negative M line was working. So this will really simplify that case, especially if you have various components of different sizes. You don't have to go in and check dimensions. Um, so um, so that really, um, that's a new feature that, uh, you know, we've gotten requests for, and it's now available for NIAWR. And um, let us know if you have any other questions. Again, this amplifier model or was, was featured in an article in High Frequency Electronics, and you can find that on our website in the literature area. Um, I also wanted to point out that in this example project, we used um, one of our Corvo GAN models for the transistor. Um, and this is also available um, by request from our website. Um, so that pretty much sums up the dynamic pad models and the things that you can do with them. And again, for more information, you can visit www.modelethics.com or contact us, and there's information on our website to contact us. And if you're interested in the library for National Instruments to try out some of these models, you can request a free demo as well. Thank you.